Pat Chapman is the best third baseman in the MLB, depending on who you ask. He obviously knows how to hit. The sound of that bat is just way too good. It's an undisputed fact that he's an amazing fielder, and if you think otherwise, you're stupid. I'm sorry. Look at how far he ran for that ball. He is insane. And as a bonus, he looks like he's constantly taking a dump on the field. Yeah, the way he fields. If you were taking a nature poop, this is how you would sit. If you know who Matt Chapman is, you know who this guy is. Howdy. And they went to the same high school. That's weird. In all seriousness, that actually is super weird. Like, they're literally the two best third basemen in the MLB, defensively. And they went to the same high school. Like, they were in high school at the same time. I just don't understand. How is that possible? Now that we know that Matt Chapman is this good, the question is, is it because of his glove? The answer is simply no, but we're going to dive into everything we can about him and his glove to just learn from. So Mr. Chapman actually has a little bit of a story to his gloves, what he's used in the past leading up to what he uses now. Before using a Wilson, he actually used a Rawlings. And from my understanding, he did that all the way through the minors. And even his rookie year, he had a Rawlings. Here's a few pictures of Rawlings gloves that he has used in the past. So Chapman actually was a shortstop his whole life. And then at one point, they started switching them over to third base. For those of you who love watching baseball videos on YouTube, you've probably heard of Wilson Glove Day. What Glove Day is, is Wilson shows up with like 50 bags of like an infinite amount of gloves and lets all the players just look through and pick whatever they want. I'm pretty sure they don't do that anymore because Rawlings is like the MLB glove now. Long story short, he picks up a 1787, which is 1175. Basically, he ends up loving the glove so much that he continues to use it and he's such a good fielder that he gets his own model. That's where this comes in. This is the MC26. From my understanding, there is no difference between a 1787 and the MC26. If there is, please tell me. By the way, I got this new fielding tee to practice backhands. It's just a fake prank, remember? I simply took the time to study Matt Chapman and his glove and figure out how to break it in just like he does. So what I ended up with is this. I'll start by saying that he, along with a lot of other MLB players, has like half of his hand in the glove. The two easy ways of spotting that are one, clearly their hand is sticking out. And then two, the finger is just barely hanging out there. The 1787 is already a deep glove. Plus he's wearing a two in the pinky, which makes it even deeper. So that's nothing crazy because at third base, it's nice to have a deep pocket because you seriously get some hot shots over there. But I honestly was a little surprised at how deep he must like his pocket. Another thing that I noticed was that his web is actually pretty dang loose, which only adds to the depth of the glove. We already know that he goes to in the pinky, plus he closes his glove thumb to pinky. It's most obvious when he's getting ready to field in his dumping position, as I said before. Pay attention to his glove, because holy cow, he goes thumb to pass the pinky. At third base, you definitely want to swallow anything and everything, but you also need to make a transfer to get it to first. So he does combat that crazy depth. Matt Chapman tightens his fingers quite a lot. His feet are past his shoulders, which is nothing crazy, but generally wide set. He comes from here and he holds out like this. Hearing him talk about it, it makes sense. So at third base, you are getting hot, hot shots. And if you make one little wrong move, you're done for. No false movements means he doesn't want to do that little half step the wrong direction, anything like that. I know when I play shortstop, I move around a ton. And if I make a little mistake, usually I can make up for it. When you're playing third base and you're in the MLB, no mistakes are allowed. Let me be clear, doing this would not work anywhere else other than third, maybe first base. My like quads, thighs, my whole legs are already like generally tired. So I'm clearly not in shape. Now, yes, his fielding is super weird, but his form is just insane. Like it blows me away. Let me show a couple pictures. I, for some reason, can't get over this backhand. The same way he gets low when he's getting ready to field, he does the same thing when he's taking a backhand. Here's him just taking a ground ball straight on. Everything about it looks so perfect. We also need to recognize the fact that he plays super deep. I was watching a clip of Chapman talking about his high school coach and what his high school coach said was, play as deep as your arm will let you. That coach is doing something right because Nolan Renato and Matt Chapman are just the best. You simply need to be smart enough to know that if somebody's beating you out consistently, you need to scoot it. Whereas on the other hand, if you are consistently throwing kids out by a mile, maybe you need to take a couple steps back and give yourselves more opportunities to make more plays. That's exactly what Matt Chapman does, and he's basically playing on the grass on an MLB infield. Matt Chapman's glove and Nolan Arenado's glove. Literally just do whatever you want with it, get a feel for it. And then here, I'll give you this one. This one's a little bit looser. Out of these two, which one would you pick? Oh yeah, so I like smaller gloves and Yeah, gloves. yeah, this, that's 12 inches, this is 11.75, so you nailed it. All right, Joey, well you heard me say it. What do you like, what do you hate about it? Big. It's big, for sure. And then here, go ahead, feel this one too. This one, both of you guys. All right, and then tell me why. I like the smaller glove. Makes sense, especially with you guys being younger, it makes sense, you like the smaller glove. Any last comments? 
Do. You guys rock. So you want to get your glove broken in just like Matt Chapman. It's actually not that hard. I'll take you guys through a few steps to do exactly that. Break it in just like he does. Step one is actually just get your glove broken in. If you can't field ground balls and play catch with it yet, you still need to do some more work. So after that, what you need to do is actually tighten the fingers. So you can see the glove comes with generally tight fingers. It's not like they're super loose, but what we're gonna do is tighten them even more because that's exactly what Matt Chapman does. Like we said before, this model of glove already has a super deep pocket and without tightening those fingers, it's almost gonna be too deep. By tightening the fingers, we're creating a little bit smaller of a pocket. It's simple. In all honesty, tightening your fingers is kind of a pain in the butt, kind of hurts your fingers. Start with this lace right here. You have to untie it, start tightening this over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. And once you get to here, you're gonna have a lot of extra lace. You always wanna leave at least a little bit of length here so that when you do need to untie it or anything like that, you can actually do so. Now that the fingers are tight, it almost feels like the glove got stiffer again. So if you need to, go back and do a little bit more work on the glove. Then step three is shaping the glove, which this is really what's gonna make it more like Matt Chapman and exactly what he wears. We need to flare the thumb, roll the fingers, and straighten the pinky. You'll notice that with his flared thumb, he doesn't flare the very end of it, he actually flares the entire thumb. I can show you a little side-by-side -side comparison of what that looks like compared to one of my other gloves, and there's quite a difference. Then moving on to our three fingers in the middle here. A Wilson naturally wants to have rolled fingers, which is great, so I just kind of grab and use my thumb to push in the center of the fingers. The pinky sort of becomes a problem because we tighten these laces so much that it wants to roll along with the fingers. Matt Chapman doesn't necessarily roll his pinky. He also doesn't flare it. He kind of keeps it just somewhere in the middle. Some of you might be saying, what about the web? Because his web is loose. While yes, that is true, that is just something that kind of comes with time and using your glove more and more and more. Just use your glove a lot. It's a ton of fun to watch MLB players and see the way that they feel and the way that they break their gloves in. So if you want to, you should actually go watch this video on Manny Machado where I do the same thing. Yay!